Good day, fellow modelers. Welcome back to another episode of Handy Reviews. I'm Mr. Handy. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a uh, revised edition of uh, Yefim Gordon's and Dmitry Komisarov's famous Russian aircraft uh, on the MiG-31. This is a new volume. This just came out, I believe, uh, last year or the year before. Um, let's just take a peek. Uh, it was released in 2020. Uh, and as it says, the full story of the Foxhound. So there was, um, there was an earlier, uh, version of this. This is now a revised, uh, edition with a lot more stuff added. So, uh, they seem to be doing that with some of their stuff. Uh, they re-released uh, the MiG-29 and the SU-27 with all the revised uh, information for all the different variants. And uh, they've done the same thing now with their MiG-31. So without further ado, let's just jump into it and take a peek. So here's our table of contents. Uh, so you got your knowledge, introduction, uh, from bats to dogs, shaping the interceptor, MiG-31 takes flight. The kennel, fox town, or fox hound versions, MiG-31 in detail, uh, beware of the dog, MiG-31 in service. Uh, then we have three appendix, appendixes, which is, uh, the first one is MiG-31 family specs, production list, accident attrition, line drawings, and then we have our index. So here is our introduction, there's our acknowledgement. Uh, we have, as I said, your, your introduction into why the MiG-31 was made. There's some nice period pictures of the Yak-28 and the SU-15, TU-128. And then we start getting into uh, the actual uh, development of the uh, Fox Bat and uh, how it slowly turned into the Fox Hound. Some nice pictures of the uh, radar set, which I believe is phased array. Uh, one of the pluses of these is uh, of these books is that they do uh, give you a whole write up on each of the variants, even the uh, the project variants. So here you get the uh, YE-155MP Interceptor Project and the YE-155MP Interceptor Project uh, 158-21 and they have these wonderful uh, mock-up models of what those projects would have looked like. Um, some very interesting drawings and some very interesting models of what could have been or what might have been. Of course, this looks like a uh, MiG-25 and a MiG-23 had a, uh, a child. Um, some nice uh, technical drawings, which are always fun to see. Again, here we go into the, uh, the different Interceptor projects again and descriptions of the Interceptor projects. So I really love how much information they actually put in these books. Um, these are almost, I mean, uh, uh, from a historical view, um, these are probably uh, the best books you can get on that subject. Um, gives you the whole history of the aircraft uh, from uh, introduction or from... Uh, you know, the, the dream of the aircraft up to production and into service. So here we got the MiG-31 takes flight. Again, uh, production or pictures of uh, production models. <clears throat> They're showing some of the differences of these production models. Uh, we get into uh, actual, again, the, uh, the actual production variants and all the uh, differences between them. Uh, lots of period pictures, which is nice. Uh, 
there we've got a little bit of a uh, picture of the uh, Wizzo station in the MiG-31. Uh, here's a bit more. Your iconology with regards to the radar. There's your uh, initial cockpits. So the front and, and rear, of course. Uh, again, production or uh, period photos. Here's all the pilots of product, or that uh, participated in the manufacturing of the MiG-31. And then here we go with the uh, different versions of the MiG-31. So we got actually into the production versions and the differences between them. So they'll be all named. Uh, so there we go, MiG-31 upgrade demonstrator, MiG-31 interceptor with in-flight refueling capability. And like I said, they just give you basically all the information. Um, there you go, some uh, draw or some uh, displays of the different armament that can be carried by the MiG-31. Again, lots and lots and lots of period pictures. This is the 91 Paris Air Show where we tended to, this was probably the first time that we got to see the MiG-31. Um, so I remember seeing these in uh, some of the old Concorde books. And thinking, wow, that's quite the, quite the machine. And then nice pictures of the MiG-31 toting all the missiles. More from 92. Uh, they kind of get into a little bit of the, uh, the missiles that are used. There's your... Uh, Phased array radar. Some again period pictures and pictures of uh, poor fox bat or foxhounds in the in the boneyard. Some nice. Uh, airframe pictures. Here's some uh, not too bad pictures of the cockpit on the upgraded versions of the MiG-31. So it's the MiG-31M, which introduced the. Uh, it looks like it introduced. This is the introduction of the glass cockpit, more of a westernized cockpit in the MiG-31. Later on, uh, some nice line drawings here again. Uh, your list of different armaments that can be carried by the MiG-31. Another picture of the cockpit. Again, some interesting stuff. Uh, this is uh, uh, an interesting uh, re uh, write-up on uh, the use of the MiG-31 for... Uh, uh, launching space vehicles. So this is apparently a, a, the RN-S space launch vehicle. Uh, so the idea was, and you can see it kind of here, them zipping up. And uh, this here is is uh, apparently an anti-AWACS missile. But uh, again, here you see some pictures. But it's kind of the similar idea where they would go up and shoot it, that thing up into, or that specific thing into space. Uh, again, more weapons for the MiG-31. Uh, production drawings, or production pictures. Uh, again, period pictures. Some uh, more of the uh, rear cockpit pictures. Uh, the MiG-31K missile strike aircraft. Um, I believe this is the one that carries the uh, uh, the uh, K-47 or something like that. Apparently, it's this huge, huge missile. Um, there it is, right there. Uh, not too sure. I can't remember what it is, but it's it comes with that. Uh, Trumpeter's uh, 
MIG-31 uh, BM, so uh, R-33. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. I can't, I, like I said, I can't remember the, can't remember the actual uh, designation of that missile right offhand. But uh, uh, so we, now we're getting into the MiG-31 in detail. <clears throat> so of course you get your uh, production drawings, um, and then some again more airframe pictures, a little bit more uh, specified uh, and. Uh, targeted areas uh, for the in detail section uh, there's some good views of uh, internal stuff for those that are uh, modeling some nice pictures of the uh, IRST and the uh, phased array radar uh, specs for the radar and then uh, we get a uh, full uh, illustration of the uh, front and back cockpit of the MiG-31 which is very nice I like this uh, this doesn't uh, this doesn't happen in a lot of these books so it is nice to actually get this uh, and then here we go with some more pictures of the uh, cockpit and then uh, some nice pictures of all the different uh, weaponry carried uh, more cockpit pictures, pictures of the uh, ejection seat, uh, cutaway of the MiG-31, uh, more pictures of the uh, electronics bays on the side of the cockpit, and then cockpit pictures, and even more cockpit pictures. And then uh, here's again uh, more stats for the MiG-31 and then we get into the actual MiG-31 in service. A lot of different bases where they're uh, stationed. Another wonderful thing about these are these uh, nice line drawings. So, as I said, quite a bit of quite a bit of knowledge, quite a bit of history. Um, this is a uh, uh, these books are actually really nice, really good for both the the history buff and the uh, the modeler. Um. And then we actually, it's its nice that when they do these uh, in service, because it actually shows the different countries that it's in service. So, uh, I mean, most of the air, most of the MiG-31s are, are in service with Russia, uh, with the Soviet Union, or Russia, I guess, is what they're called. Uh, but here we got Kazakhstan's MiG-31s. <clears throat> And of course, we now we've got the newer MiG 31s here with this uh, uh, symboling on the side, basically saying who they are. And then we go with a lot of side drawings. Lots more side drawings. Kinzel. So it's that's the name of the missile. It's Kinzel, but I can't remember the actual designation of that missile. So and then we just have the appendix of the family. So again, in each one of these books. Uh, this is the production list. So this is all of the different uh, uh, batch numbers. So you've got all your different aircraft and the different batches. Uh, there's your uh, uh, 
plant number, uh, serial numbers, uh, virgin, uh, version registry, so which type of MiG-31 it is, uh, tactical code, so you have your, again, like uh, we do in the West here with regards to uh, Soviet aircraft, they're all uh, red 8 or white 347, stuff like that. And then again, you have your notes on, you know, uh, this was flown by this person or this was this test bag or so. And it is for each airframe, which is really nice. And then here's our uh, accident and attrition section. We, and then we get into our uh, scale drawings, which is nice. Our line drawings, uh, whatever you, whatever have you. Uh, so um, it would be nice to know what scale these actually are. Um, I really wish that they would do them like most other um, uh, books in a, in a scale, like a uh, 72nd scale or something along those lines. But here's a nice cutaway of the engine with your air intakes. Again, you get your uh, side views, bottom view, front view, top view. Um, a lot more uh, of these... Uh, in the a lot more of these uh, uh, schematics in uh, in these books than in uh, some other modeling books and there is the end of that book um, as you can see it's published by Creasy so you can get you can actually get it from the Creasy site um, as I said these are, are really nice books uh, they're filled with information just filled with information uh, it hits, I believe it hits every part uh, for a good uh, book on an aircraft. What would be nice is, and I know that they're not really aimed specifically for modelers, but it would be nice to have a little bit more uh, of a, a modeling feel to some of these. Um, it, it, I mean, it, this is already uh, a one-stop shop for the history on the aircraft uh so why not you know throw a couple more things in there um section on modeling in the back might be a good thing i don't know um this is a little bit better uh, than some of the other ones because not every uh famous russian aircraft book has some of the things uh that they have in this um there were some really nice cockpit pictures. The illustrations of the cockpit is really nice. That doesn't tend to happen uh, in some of these. As a matter of fact, I think that might be the first time I've actually seen something like that uh, in this book or in these books. Uh, there's plenty of cockpit pictures and, and things like that, but uh, illustrations are a little bit different. So, um, Again, I got this one off of Amazon. Uh, my wife bought it. Uh, by accident, she says, <laughs> but uh, it uh, they say it was uh, sixty four ninety five American. I think I got this for fifty bucks on Amazon Canadian. Um, it came from uh, Book Depository in the UK. Uh, you can get it from Creasy. Uh, they do have these uh, Book Depository still, uh, and they are still uh, listed on Amazon. So uh, if you're the Mig thirty one. Uh, Foxhound is an interesting aircraft to you. Go ahead and uh, buy it. It's a nice hardcover. Uh, like I said, this is the uh, revised edition, an updated version. Uh, there's an older version, which is much, much smaller than this. I think it's only about half of this size. Uh, I do have it in my library. Uh, maybe I'll do a review on it, but it is half the size of it. So... Uh, this is definitely worth uh, picking up uh, if you're a MiG-31 lover. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe. Thanks for the support. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, and uh, happy modeling. Take care and uh, have yourself a good day.